Hello everyone, it's Dr. Jawad. Thank you for turning in. Remember, four things. Hit the like button, subscribe button, bell notification, and comment down below. If you like this video, please share with a friend. I did a video on PMS and PMDD. It was pretty long, I know that. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I broke it down in a couple sections. This section is the review of the menstrual cycle and how you become estrogen dominant with your menstrual cycle. So thanks for watching. Okay, so before I go into what I think, what I recommend, how to treat PMS or PMDD, let's just backtrack and let's go over the menstrual cycle. I've done the menstrual cycle before in full detail and I'll put the link down below, but this is just a summary version. Now the menstrual cycle is a 28 day cycle. On the average it's 28 days. So every 28 days, the female body goes through a cycle and it sheds the uterine lining at day zero through five. So it divides into four different phases. So phase one is the follicular phase, which is days actually zero through 14. What happens in the follicular phase? The hormone that's dominant is estrogen. Estrogen, the function of estrogen is for cell replication. So the, the egg begins to develop in the ovaries, the follicle, follicular phase, F first, follicle. This is when the, ov this is when the o ovary is developing the egg and also the uterus begins to thicken. So you have days six through 12, estrogen skyrockets about 10 to 12 times in the female system to build up this uterine lining. Remember the function of estrogen is for cell replication. So you got this tremendous surge and roughly about day 12, ovulation occurs. Now another hormone called luteinizing hormone, which is under the influence of progesterone, that, rele that's, that releases and that triggers ovulation. So the egg is released out of the ovary and it starts to make its way down the fallopian tube during the ovulation phase. Now this time right here, this four day window, this is when the female is able to get pregnant. So out of a 28 day cycle, the female has a chance for only four days of a month. Sperm lives in the uterus and fallopian tubes for about three days. So there is a very thick window that, I mean, I'm sorry, a very small window that she could get pregnant. So you got the rise in luteinizing hormone, so the egg is released from the ovaries, and there's a sharp increase in the estrogen secretions. So then you can see here, so the first phase is follicular phase, estrogen dominance. Then you have ovulation, and look at how a dip, the dip of estrogen just declines rapidly, but now you have a sharp increase in progesterone. And this is called the luteal phase, last, luteal. So then you got the rise in progesterone, which the function of progesterone is to mature the lining. So the function of estrogen is cell replication. The function of progesterone, progestation, is to make the uterine lining more thickened and more mature for implantation. So you got the skyrocket surge of progesterone in the second half of the cycle and a dip in estrogen, and you still get a little bit of peaks and valleys here with estrogen as well. So that's luteal phase. It maintains the uterine lining for implantation. Now, if they are, if, if they do get pregnant, then what happens then another the whole different phase happens and then the secretion of human uh, chorionic uh, traffic hormone, HCG, is released and tells everybody, and tells the over, hey, I'm pregnant, do not release another egg. <laughs> so let's say nothing happens and then by days, like the last days, like the last three days, so like days 25 through 28, this is where PMS occurs. Why? Because you have a sharp decrease in both the hormones, in progesterone and estrogen. So, which triggers menstruation. So during menstruation, the estrogen progesterone levels are very, very low, and the drop, and the, drop in the hormones signals the release of the uterine lining, and then there's, a, there's menses occur. Now, PMS typically occurs toward the end of the luteal phase, and PMS happens when it's estrogen dominant. So how does that mean, estrogen dominant? Okay, so let's talk about what causes PMS. Now, with the menstrual cycle, remember, you have the first side first, the follicular phase, which is more estrogen dominant. You have the last phase, luteal phase, which is more progesterone dominant. Now, the females, you make progesterone, it's the ratio, about 25 to 1. So you gotta make, you're making 25 times the amount of progesterone than estrogen. 
it does fluctuate throughout the cycle, but the irregularity comes in the last three or four days of the dip of the menstrual cycle. Now again, the ratio 25 to one. So what causes this dip? Stress, adrenal dysfunction. Why? Because stress releases a, a hormone from the adrenal glands called cortisol. And cortisol, glucocorticoid, glucocortisol, so the, the sugar part, glucose, which has to create, you know, cross the blood-brain barrier to give the body its energy, the brain its energy. And then you have the cortisol, which is the anti-inflammatory hormone, which acute stress is your body can handle, but this is chronic, 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 chronic stress. Let's go upstream. What makes cortisol? Progesterone. What makes all of this? is cholesterol. So cholesterol makes pregnenolone, which moves over a couple of other boxes, makes progesterone, and down what, what makes cortisol? Progesterone. So the more stressed out you are, you're making more, your progesterone is making more cortisol, blood sugar issues because it's a glucocorticoid, this is when you start craving sweets because you want something sugarly, sugary. What happens? Progesterone makes cortisol. Increased stress secretes more cortisol because the body, may, the cortisol like dominates the body. That's what happens. Then you get a decrease in, you get a deficiency in progesterone, which in turn, you get an increase in estrogen, estrogen dominant. The ratio goes from like 25 to one, maybe down to, down to maybe 10 to one. So let's say you have, you know, in the last part of the cycle, you t this is where the break is. Okay, so you're stressed out, you're stressed out, you're stressed out. So then now, progesterone takes a dip. The ratio changes from 25 to one to maybe from 10 to one. And in turn, the fluctuations of estrogen That's what causes the PMS symptoms, headaches, for example. So it's the last half, the PMS, the last half of the cycle that causes PMS. Why? Adrenal dysfunction. But let's go back upstream. What makes estrogen? Your ovaries. What makes progesterone and cortisol? Your adrenal glands, your stress glands. Cholesterol, pregnenolone comes over comes down, progesterone, to make cortisol. And this is all in the adrenal glands. Progesterone and estrogen are made two different places, not the same. So the more stressed out you are, you decrease your cortisol, your pregnenolone. I'm sorry, your uh, progesterone. And I always say, estrogen is like the gas pedal, progesterone is like the brake. So the fluctuations in estrogen causes P common Common symptoms of PMS causes bloating, causes tension. The fluctuations in blood sugar causes binge eating, bowel issues, cramping, sleep disturbances. You're full of stress, you can't sleep. If you can't sleep, you can't repair yourself. And it's a never ending cycle. Headaches, persistent anger. Oh, if you're stressed out, you're always angry. PMS, irritability, mood swings. Common symptoms, now again, there's more, but this is all I listed, common symptoms of PMS. So let's talk about estrogen dominance. Symptoms of estrogen dominance. Wow, endometriosis, because what's the function of estrogen? Cell replication. Irregular periods. Your hormones are all imbalanced. Cellulite. Believe it or not, <laughs> you're gonna like this. Uh, before the advent of the birth control pill, Women had no cellulite. The first birth control pill that came out was, at, was loaded with estrogen. And that's where cellulite occurred because you have too much estrogen. Look that up. Infertility, PMS, fibroid cyst, cysts. Now remember, what's estrogen? Its job is to replicate cells. What are fibroids and cysts? Cells that are replicated. Breast lumps, thyroid nodules, all signs of estrogen dominance. Remember, so PMS, to sum it up, 
So PMS, the last couple of days before your cycle, your hormones are dropping anyways, but when you're stressed out, what makes, you know, your stress hormone cortisol, what makes it? Progesterone, going downhill. The more stressed out you are, the more progesterone you're, is being produced, is not doing its job of making cortisol because that's the main function of the adrenal glands. You become estrogen dominant.